guys, welcome to Cruise Tips Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about first time cruising to kind of help all those first time cruisers out there and help their first cruise run smoothly. Yes. <laughs> Without any rough seas. That's right. All right, a little cruising humor there. So, um, so the the one thing that um, you know we get asked a lot about cruising when we tell people that we've we've been on a number of cruises. They always say, oh gosh, well, you must have a lot of money or something, and we do not by any means. But the best thing about cruising is paying for the cruise is is a pretty neat setup because you book your cruise many months in advance, you pay a little money down to book it, and then you pay on it, you pay on it as you go until you're, I don't know, like a couple months, couple yeah. months two and months out of the cruise, the cruise, and then you have it paid for. So your whole cruise is basically paid for besides just expenses and extra things that you want to purchase when you're on the ship. So as opposed to a land-based trip where you have to save up everything and have all the money for the for the you know those that week right there, you can be prepaid on this thing, and you really uh, I, you know it's much easier to budget and um, and we find a lot easier to plan and, and work out as far as finances yeah. go. So that's why we love cruising. There's and a couple different families. Oh they yeah, have a lot of kids clubs and things. So they just—it's just a really good family vacation or couples vacation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can't recommend it enough. Now, when you when you when you decide to take a cruise and then you want to book the cruise, um, then you have a few decisions to make. Whether right. you want to go with um, a travel agent or a travel planner like Sharon, um, right. or a, or someone that works for the cruise line like a personal mm -hmm. vacation planner. Um, there's not a lot of difference. The only thing is a travel agent will kind of stick with you throughout all the way to the end if you have a good one. And they can go ahead and get you price drops, get you little perks sometimes. Whereas if you book directly through the cruise line, once you booked, you really don't talk to them again unless you call them and ask them a question. They're not going to kind of follow you through the same way. So it's kind of just a personal preference. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much. And over time, you can create a relationship with these people. Right. And, you know, I, I know with a travel uh, travel agent or um, a travel planner, you can call them anytime something's worrying you. You got a question about, well, we'll talk about this, but yeah. passports so that, or yeah. ports or different things right. like that, you can call on them anytime. Mm -hmm. And that can be um, really helpful to a new cruiser yeah. um, when someone has a lot of questions. So, but that's something, you know, that's just your own decision. So, another thing is... Um, need to choose what kind of cruise you want to go on, um, where you want to cruise from, uh, what cruise line, what ship, and there's a few factors involved in that. Some people like to drive to the port, so if that's the case, then you need to find the ports close to your home and what cruise lines go out of there and what ships and kind of go from there. If you're going to fly, then you have a lot more options. Um, you can choose, you know, if you want to go to the Caribbean, choose what port you want to go out of, what ship. Um, cruise lines vary. There are some that are more family friendly. Some tend to cater more to the, um, like a senior crowd. Um, there's yeah, some are a lot more uh, fun oriented. We yeah. we do a lot of carnival cruising. We like them because they are they're very family oriented. Mm -hmm. um, they're a lot of fun. Some people don't care for carnival. Some like um, some of the other cruise lines. So it's really a personal preference and what type of things you like to do and what you're looking to get Sure, out of if you want to be pampered, um, maybe Holland America, if you're a little bit older crowd, yeah. you know, yeah. if that's what you favor, so, they might be good for you. Uh, Princess might be a little bit fancier. You got your Royal Caribbean, which is uh, geared a little more family type. Family type um, too. You know, but again, we've it's always done Carnival because it works for our budget and it gives right. us everything we need from our vacation. And Disney's always great with kids as well, but like most people say, it's you're going to pay probably almost double what you do on some yeah. of the other cruise lines. So it's it's really just what what your budget and there's no is casino, and what so you're I can't for. I that's can't true. go on a Disney, Disney cruise. Has no casino. So, <laughs> so we can't go. That's a strike for me right there. We're I got to be stick with going to Disneyland and Disney World. All right, so what else? <laughs> um, okay, so once you're all booked, what are you going to do between the time you book and your cruise? Sometimes it's several months to a year out, and you're all you're doing is thinking about your cruise and excited. Well, start doing some research on your ports. Plan your excursions. Uh, you can get on the Facebook groups for your um, actual cruise itinerary and kind of interact with some of the other people. That's a good way to get some of your questions answered to some of the others. They've, they've cruised more. Um, some have already been on the ship before. And they plan a lot of sort of activities with those Facebook groups as well that you can interact in if you're interested. So that's just some of the things to kind of do to keep you busy and getting keep your excitement level up. 
while you're waiting to cruise. Yeah, that's the only bad thing about booking a cruise is you book it, but it may not be a year right. or longer till right. that you know that ship's ready to sail. And so then you got to occupy your time as you're getting excited to uh, to go. Correct. Now you got to if if you book a bunch of them. You know, maybe one every six months, and it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. And, and uh, the further out you book them, the, the better rate you're going to get. So that's why yeah. a lot of people book them farther out. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot better rate. So um, another thing is, oh, and then packing, of course. And that's there's a lot of packing videos, lots of things out there, so I'm not going to really go into that. Um, but there's, you know, different things you may need, and you can kind of follow up on those yourself and watch some other videos. We actually have a few packing videos out there ourselves. Oh, yeah. Another That's high um, quality uh, <laughs> YouTube, you know, right. watching those packing videos. Another thing that's really important is your documents. Passports are always the best, but you don't have to have passports to cruise um, to a lot of places. Uh, if you don't have a passport, you definitely need a picture ID, like a driver's license, and a birth certificate. Both of those two things. Um, children either need a passport or just a birth certificate. So now if you're cruising out of the country, like to Canada, to Europe, like that, you you have to have a passport. There's no option for the birth certificate. Yeah. And it has to also be a closed loop cruise, which means it starts at one port and goes, finishes at the same port. Starts in the United to, States, to goes to out use, of country, and then comes right, back again. Right, to use the... Um, just the birth certificate option. Mm -hmm. So there's some things like that, and that's as you're planning your cruise, you can kind of find out if your cruise, what category that falls yeah, I'll into. I'll tell you, get a passport, that way you're covered no matter where you go or what you do. Right. And the one thing about a passport is, there's a lot of places where um, you only need your ID to get on and off the ship, uh, you know, when you're in port. Um, but so. God forbid something happens, you get left behind, there's an accident, there's an injury, mm -hmm. there's an illness or something like that and you have to stay behind um, on an island somewhere or something, having your passport is going to be the key to being able to get home easily without any issues. Right. So, yeah. So, it's, it's passport's really the way to go, although if it's if it's if you don't have it and you really want to cruise and it's, you're not going to have it in time and it's just not an option for you, then you will be okay with the driver's mm -hmm. license and birth certificate. Also, make sure that when you book, the name that you book under has to match your ID. Right. You know, you have to take into consideration if you're married, if you're divorced, if you've had a name change, any of that With stuff that, going on. You're gonna have to bring. You know, you have to pay attention there. Yeah, sometimes you have to bring a copy of a marriage license or even divorce paper. Sometimes if your name's different, um, so there's little things like that paperwork you might need to bring. Sometimes if you're you're traveling with one of your kids and maybe the other parent isn't going, there's also a form sometimes to fill out to have notarized and little mm -hmm. things like that. Because you sure you don't want to get to the cruise port and all of a sudden they say no, you can't board the ship because you don't have the right documentation. So yes. just th those are just things to really check into and follow up on, and maybe we'll do a video down the road here that mm -hmm. kind of gets into that. Most of the websites for depth. the for the cruise lines but, will have that kind of information right. there for you. So so you're all booked, ready to go. You get to the port. You're going to hand off all your big luggage to the porters that are out there. Um, they will take all your big suitcases onto the ship for you and deliver yeah. it to your room. It's kind of like getting on an airplane. You know, right. you check your big baggage and you carry on something and they they run it through a scanner the same as if you're in the airport. So they're looking for anything that shouldn't be in there. Although the difference is, obviously you can have liquids and shampoos and, and all yeah, those kind of no, things. And there's no weight limit on um, at the oh, cruise yeah, line. That's, that's good that's news. Good too. And, but your carry-ons you take on just like at the airport. They'll run them through the little scanner there and um, and if you do, actually, we'll talk about that in a minute, but if you bring any soda, you're allowed a 12-pack of soda on per person, as well as a bottle of 750-milliliter bottle of wine per adult. Yeah. And that has to come on your carry-on. Check, you though. Check, check with your cruise line. There may be some differences between yeah. certain cruise lines. Our but, information is uh, from our experience with Carnival. And a couple and others other lines that are may out have there a few are differences that. But there. there may be some that are a little more maybe high-end and things that don't, don't allow those. Um, so yes, check with your cruise line just to be sure. But any kind of liquid that you do carry on, whatever they allow, it does need to come in your carry-on. No and if you're line. thinking about sneaking a little booze on board, <laughs> they will look for it. That's if right. you carry it in your in your your carry-on, chances are they'll find it and they will look for it um, in uh, in your luggage that you pack as well. And there's kind of a thing where people on occasion will get a letter in their cabin 
saying, please come down and pick up your luggage. Um, and they'll literally have your luggage down at a lower deck um, where they've gone through and they found something. And then you have to come down and take the walk of shame and go down there and pick up your luggage. Sounds you know, like that's happened to you before. No, no, I've read about it. Um, no, I'm way too smart to get caught. Uh, no, just kidding. If anyone from the cruise line is listening, oh but um, gosh. no, but I read about this stuff before, and you can see videos all over the place and online. You can see stuff about how people try to sneak it on. But hey, the cruise ships are making money from alcohol, and they don't want you to bring your own stash. Um, they want you to buy it there. And uh, is can we talk about drinking well, on board? Well, we might as well go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, this is a hot there topic. is there is um, they offer a drink package on most all cruise lines now. Mm -hmm. Each cruise line, it's a different price. Um, just off the top of my head, I know Carnival, if you book ahead of time, it's like $49.95 a day. If you wait till you get on board, it's $54.95 a day. Um, Royal Caribbean, I believe, last I heard it was, I think, $79.95 a day. And I don't know if it changes when you get on board or not. Um, so it's quite a bit more. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know if it's the limitations are the same. But most of them include about up to 15 drinks a day. Um, and so, mm -hmm. you know, it really just depends. Like, well, listen, drinking can get a little costly, okay? The pricing is going to be the same as if you went out probably to a, a nightclub or something like that. It's not cheap like your local mm -hmm. saloon. Um, <laughs> so it costs a little bit more. I mean, so you're going to pay, you know, four or five bucks for a yeah. beer. So it really depends on how much you drink. You know, if you're mm -hmm. someone that drinks about six drinks a day, whether just beers or something, then it might be cost effective to get the alcohol package if you're someone that just maybe drinks one or two sometimes doesn't drink it's not mm -hmm. and another thing is it, all the adults in the room if one gets it they all have to get it so if one of you drinks a lot and one doesn't drink so much sometimes it still doesn't it doesn't pay yeah, like for because us because Sharon she can't stop drink. drinking on the ship <laughs> and me I'm like settle yeah, down no, I don't drink easy. that much and he drinks a little more but so it but it's not really cost effective for us um, but we actually, I think we're going to try it one before long just because we want to try it and kind of just see how it goes. Yeah, but, I want to see what's a better deal. Um, but yeah, there are some stipulations. Yes. So check with your cruise line because like we said, they all are a little bit different. And they do off, also offer just like, um, they're called like a soda card, soda package on some. Uh, on Carnival, it's called a bubbles package and it's just for your soda. If you want to, if you're like someone that likes to drink a lot of soda, you can bring it on board yourself, a 12 pack, like I said. But you can also buy it um, so mm -hmm. that you can just have unlimited yeah. Our 12 year old loves it because yeah. he gets to run up to any bar and just flash his card. So it's a good and get option sometimes for kids too. They can just kind of go to yeah. their own drink whenever. Well, because remember, when you get on the ship, I mean, you can have water, there's going to be tea, coffee, oh, some that's juices. So that's all going to be available. Um, some iced tea, uh, stuff like that. But anything else you will pay for sodas, mm -hmm. fan, you know, espresso, cappuccinos, obviously alcohol, right. stuff like that you will pay additional for. And some cruise lines, you can still bring water on. I know Carnival, you can't bring it in the bottles anymore, but they do sell a 12-pack ahead of time online to have in your stateroom for, um, I believe, last I bucks. heard it was like three ninety nine or so. Yeah, it's real cheap. But, yeah, so it's not bad. It's, just, it's well worth it to order it ahead. They just do that, again, to stop people from sneaking, you know, yeah, booze on the ship. Yeah, people are sneaking, yeah, the alcohol in it. So, so that's why they had to, to get rid of that. Stop drinkers. So anyway, so that's a little bit of the alcohol program. We'll go into that another time a little more. Mm -hmm. So once you're on board, you're going to be just kind of probably like in awe of everything. It's just Yeah, it can be gonna, a little overwhelming yeah, when so you get on there. There's all kinds of things to do when you first get on. Most people head to the Lido deck and eat, <laughs> stuff their mm -hmm. faces. That's good. Um, there's like a sail away party. There is... Um, Hold on, before you get into the, get, into the onboard stuff, so when you get to the port... Um, uh, we mentioned how you're gonna, you know, you'll you'll find someone, you'll check your bags, they'll let you know, yeah, okay, I'm getting on this ship. They'll take your bags to make sure they get uh, loaded on. Um, remember, there's luggage for 2,200 or 2,500 people all getting put on quickly, mm -hmm. and they'll take it and they'll bring it up and drop it off in front of the door, um, you know, at your cabin. And depending on how you're set up and and uh, what you booked and things, it it could be three, four hours right. later till you get your luggage, or it could be you know 30 minutes after you get on board. So, you know, be prepared. We always bring yeah. a little extra bag with what we yeah, might need sure in case in your, our luggage yeah. gets lost make or sure delayed or anything. Make sure carry-on you have uh, all your, anything, any kind of document you're going to need to get on board. Any medications you're going to need. Um, you might want to bring an extra outfit or a swimsuit in case you decide you want to, you know. Yeah, you want to jump in the pool or lay out or something, hot tub it. 
but in, or in, and maybe some of your toiletries. But you might want, yeah, just make sure you have anything that you possibly are going to yeah, need. Medicine, throughout prescription. Throughout that night, just in case it doesn't arrive until late in the evening. Yes. So. And usually every cruise, there's at least one piece of lost <laughs> luggage. Yeah. But really, one when you're talking about thousands of pieces is not that big a deal. Right. And then, and when you get to the port, once you check your bags, they're gonna walk you through and tell you where to go. And you go and you check in, and you'll get your sail and sign card. Everyone's very friendly. Um, and they'll tell you where to go and how and where you'll wait, and then you'll get called to walk onto the ship. And mm -hmm. so it's a it's a whole process, but um, but it's pretty easy to maneuver. And there'll definitely be people there to kind of tell right. you where to go and point yeah. you in the right direction. So, All right, so you get so on the ship so and you're like, whoa. there's a sail whoa. away party. Some people, like I said, like to eat. Sometimes you like to just explore the ship. Take the map, just kind of explore. That's always fun. Um, go check your dining table. See where your seating is um, if you have a, a set dining time. That way, if you don't like, if you really, really don't like your table, you can usually meet with the maitre d' that afternoon and get it switched. Um, Sometimes people just, you know, to go to the room and unpack if their luggage is there. Uh, if you have a balcony, sometimes you like to hang out on that. There's just like a lot of options and it's usually kind of crazy that first day and you just, then all of a sudden you'll hear like a big, usually a big horn sounding about 30 minutes before sail away and it'll be the muster drill. And well, I don't yeah, know. they'll start making announcements and, right. and things like that and, and, um, and it's the, the worst 30 minutes of the entire cruise. <laughs> will happen just a few hours before you get on the ship yeah. where you go through the safety briefing and you report to your muster station now, and some, that's a real pain in the butt. Some cruise lines still make you go to your cabin and get the um, life, life vest and wear it during the safety briefing. Others just uh, want you to bring it and some don't even make you take it anymore. Carnival, you don't even have to take it. Uh, but it's usually, yeah, usually about 30, 45 minutes. It really depends on how long it takes everyone to get there because a lot of cruise lines now they're scanning your card as you go mm -hmm. to make sure everyone's there. Yeah, and, they and did if, that on our last cruise. Right, and if everyone's not there, that holds things up. They can't start. So don't try to sneak and hide in the bathroom or anything because they do come around. They open cabins. They check to make sure everyone's out. Yeah, they'll look it's on your balcony deal. and the whole deal. Right, so it's, it's a you're big not getting deal out of it. and they, they, they have to by law. They have to do this. So yes. you just kind of have to go with it, get through it, and, and it'll be over. <laughs> and sometimes it's kind of funny because people have been on the ship for a few hours by now. And there will be some hammered people at the mustard <laughs> yeah. drill. Yeah. Um, I mean, just making a fool of themselves, and it's always, you know, it's always something fun to to, to see at the mustard drill. Yeah, and some people, um, some oh well, sometimes it's outside still, and then there's a few of the newer ships they actually have it indoors, which is nice because then you don't have to stand out. Cause sometimes it's hot and everything. So yeah, our last we had one recently where we were in the casino. Yeah, that was our mustard we station at a in the casino. Table. Yeah. yeah, so our son got set a roulette. So yeah. while we're <laughs> Waiting on the briefing, I was showing him how to how to play a little roulette. So yeah, hey. so that was funny. But anyways, so now let's talk about something really important. How do you pay for things on the ship? <laughs> a lot of people um, think you know you pay with cash or can, why can't I use my credit card? They get really really upset. I've seen people go to um, guest services, really upset that they tried to buy something in the gift shop or something to drink and the person would not take their credit card for payment. Mm, yeah. You ha you can own the only thing way of paying for anything on the ship except for the casino is to use what your ship card, which on Carnival, some of the other cruise lines, it's called a sail and sign card. I know Royal Caribbean, they call it a sea pass mm -hmm. card. Um, so each cruise line has their own name for them, but that is kind of like your life when you're on the ship. That's what opens your cabin door. That's what you pay for everything with. Yes. You use that to get on and off the ship. They swipe it so they know if you're off the ship and you're on back on the ship. Because when you because when you check in, you can attach your credit card um, to your account, and so just whatever you spend, they'll just bill your card. You can also just put cash on your card as well. Um, you know, you can get you can put some cash on maybe when you're checking in or once you get on the ship. There's kiosks yeah. you can do it and uh, stuff like that but okay. everything is charged basically to your room kind of like a hotel yeah. um, and then you'll just pay it all at the end of the cruise right and um, you'll either get billed for your credit card yeah. or whatever cash or gift cards some people have gift cards on um, it will deduct that and if you have any money left over as long as it wasn't like a non-refundable credit that they had given you 
um, they will send you a check or give you a check depending on the cruise line. Yeah, I think if it's under if it's under under a if certain it's, amount, if it's under ten bucks, they may just donate it or something. And over ten bucks, they'll send cut you a check if you uh, you know put too much cash on, you don't get it. But that's one of the things that's tricky for people because. You get on the ship, you're putting money on, and so you might be waiting in line for a minute to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the last day or two, there's always a long line yeah. of guest services of people trying to square up their account. So if you need to spread anything so, out, go the morning of the last day and kind of get things you know, set before you yeah. get up. Otherwise, you have to wait in these long lines, mm -hmm. and you don't want to do that the you last day. You can always night. track what you spent. Usually, the TV systems will have something where you can see what you mm -hmm. spent. Um, you can go down to the, to the guest services desk. I mentioned the kiosks. You can go in there and set it up so and they'll print out a report Cargill, of all your expenditures. Um, and I think Princess has those, but I'm not sure. But some of the cruise lines may not have them, but some do. So I'm that's pretty, something. To I bet check. a bunch. I bet a lot of them have it already. So um, it's kind deal. of a newer thing, but yeah, so most of them have probably yes. gotten them now. So don't try to pay cash. Now Sharon mentioned the casino is cash, uh -huh. and you can go to the casino and put your sale and sign card down, and they'll charge you. To your room and give you cash to gamble with um but they will charge you like three percent for doing that yeah, so you bring a little cash on board best, yeah. and then and if you want to you can tip some folks if somebody gives you amazing service you want to tip them extra but one of the keys about being charged and what you'll spend is during the course of the cruise you will be charged your uh your tips Right. Uh, per person, so don't be surprised. About midway through your cruise, yeah, that'll when that be hits your hits your, your hits your um, card or your account. Sign card. Um, and it, it's different. Each cruise line's different, and I'm just gonna kind of say it's anywhere between eleven and probably like thirteen to fourteen dollars a day per person, depending on what cruise line you go on. Mm -hmm. I know Carnival, I think is I think it's twelve fifty now a day, but some of the more luxury type cruise lines, they're gonna be higher. Yeah. And so, you know, but if, you're, if there's cruise, three of you traveling, don't be surprised when like $300 worth of <laughs> tips all of a sudden hit your account. And you're like, whoa, what happened? So these are things to be aware of, you know, before booking that that's a charge you will right. incur on the ship. You can prepay it. You can pay them ahead of time before you go on the cruise right. if you want to do that. No, you don't have to worry about yeah. it. But that's a charge that you could get hit with. Mm -hmm. And um, and it always thinks when people get hit with that charge and then they go down and they adjust their tips down. Um, one key thing about getting, uh, you know, some people tips. will take them off or, or two, but it's, mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm not going to get into that because I'm not going to, but I, all I'm going to say is the people on the cruise line work really, really hard and you know, they deserve the tips. So. They do deserve the tips, <laughs> but listen, but they will hit you automatically, but you can adjust them up or down. Okay, or you can slide more money over to one person if you had an amazing experience here and not too amazing over here. You can adjust it, you can add more to it, or you can tip additional in cash uh, for some great service too. So, um, so, so those are all things to, to consider, uh, you know, as far as tipping goes. Right. So, um, let's see. Now, excursions. Excursions, mm. real quickly, I'll just hit on that because there's all kinds of excursions in every port. You can either book ahead of time online, so you're all pre-booked all through the cruise line, or you can book at the shore excursion desk once you get on board. If it's something that looks like it's going to sell out, I would suggest you book it online. And another thing, you can do a lot of research, and you can book a lot of um, excursions outside of the cruise line, like private excursions. We do that now a lot, but we've cruised a lot, and a lot of people do that. I There's no harm in doing that. They're usually very safe, but... For a first-time cruiser, I would personally just suggest you stick with cruise line excursions, at least till you've done it once and you got it, the whole system down of how you get on and off the ship, getting back mm -hmm. on, and just the whole process. I would yes. recommend you stay with the cruise line excursions. Well, the nice thing, but, too, if you book it on with the cruise, number one, when you book your excursion with the cruise, um, you're guaranteed to not miss it. If you're on a bus somewhere and it breaks down and you're late to get back, the ship will not leave. Right. But if you book your own excursion and that bus breaks down, that ship will leave at four or five o'clock and say, to you "See ya." To get to the next yeah, port and you gotta get to the next port to get to get on <laughs> on the ship again. So that's one factor to you know to keep in mind. And yeah. and getting off the ship um, in a port and the process of doing that can be tricky. Uh, ports can change weather can have an effect on on yeah. your ports and things like that Yeah, and if you book through the cruise line, they'll adjust it They'll give you a different excursion for a different day yes. or give you a refund or whatever if, mm -hmm. if something's changed with the due to weather and yeah. port change 
so that's just good some information to kind of keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Next um, on the board, there's all kinds of entertainment. Um, the best thing, way to find out what's going on is there's activity schedules that I'll usually put, put in your room every day. Usually when they kind of come clean your room, they'll leave one. And it'll have the information for the following day with just everything going on and what times everything is from different activities, shows, to what time different restaurants open. Yeah. Um, just everything. Um, and you'll find all kinds of things. Like there's shows, there's magic shows, there's comedy shows, there's yeah, you can do everything. Games, you trivia. Can, you can go to a uh, an AA um, meeting activity <laughs> that they'll have, and it, and it, that'll yeah. be in the. That's uh, right. They do have those. And I've seen that in the activity. Or you can go to an R-rated comedian that will be dropping f bombs like you've never heard before, and anything in between. But like Sharon said, if you got to... You know, look at the activity thing, highlight what you want to do, right? And then you got to plan to be there, and you got to be there a little early, because there are, you know, a thousand other people trying to get right. in that same room I, at a certain time. And I will say, some cruise lines, yeah, it's kind of first come first serve. There are a few cruise lines. I think Royal Caribbean's one of them. Um, I'm trying to think there was another one, but you actually have to make reservations. A lot of times they make reservations online for the sh the nightly shows ahead of time. Mm. So, and if you don't make a reservation, you may not even be able to see that show once yeah. you're bored. There, so each cruise line is a little different on that, but um, so yeah, just, just kind of be aware of that and and know how it works before you go. That's something to kind of research on your cruise line because you don't want to miss like all the shows and everything. Yeah, so. and ask people. Anyone working on the ship will gladly tell you what's going on. Um, you can ask a bartender, your your servers in the restaurant will probably know exactly what's happening, mm -hmm. um, and all and that kind of stuff. And if you've been on a few cruises, sometimes some of the shows are repeats, you don't always want to go to them. But for yeah, a first-time cruiser, the shows are, like, awesome. I mean, you'll just love them. I mean, yeah, it's, like Las Vegas it's, Review type, yeah. of, type of entertainment. And you it's crazy when the ship's moving a little bit, you know, you're in some rough waters, and people are dancing and singing. It's amazing how they Yeah, I don't know how they're not, you know, falling over. Because yeah. usually by that time of the evening, I'm ready to fall over, <laughs> but not always because of the wall. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. Well, let's move on to internet and social media packages. They, most all cruise lines will offer an internet and social media package now. Um, they are, the cost and what is included is going to be different for cruise lines, so that's another thing just to check with your specific cruise line. Um what? And that's basically about it. You know, a lot of people get that now because they need to stay in touch for yeah. work or for other reasons. They need the internet. A lot of people just get like a social media package so they can post their pictures on Facebook or Instagram well, you can usually, while they're cruising. Usually the ships will have an area where there are computers and things where you can have access to a computer. Right. Um, or if people will bring a laptop. A laptop or you can use your phone. You can use your phone or, or any other device that connects, you know, that can do, but, you know connect via Wi-Fi. Um and that's the thing to do. But what's but the get, first you, thing that you do when you get on the ship? I'm going to remind you this again at the end. But when you get on the ship, it's okay to have leave your phone on. But once you set sail and you're getting ready to sail away, and you hear that oh, horn yeah. beep on the ship, yeah. remember to put your cell phone in airplane mode. Oh, yeah. Do not set sail with it not in airplane mode. Even if you have the internet package, the social media package, all that it needs to be in airplane mode mm -hmm. because if you take off and some of all those apps are running and everything, yeah. you could be hit with a really the, the data tries to pull and you were getting raked over get the coals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's happened to a lot of people. And yes, it's, it's, it's on occasion you go to a port which is like a U.S. port and check with your cell phone provider. Um, we were in Alaska and we did have mm -hmm. some cell phone service. There are some in the Caribbean, some of the uh -huh. bars and things. They'll have free Wi-Fi and things that too. Yes, or and and we turned it. Wait, I took my phone off airplane mode a few times. But boy, you better remember to put it back on because yeah. once you take off, you're in trouble because you'll connect to the ship cell tower, and then and who knows what yeah. kind of roaming charges you're gonna have. Yeah, so just be really um, careful because yeah. that's, that's it can be pretty rough. Yeah, that's, that'll ruin your trip if you go home to that. Oh God, yes. <laughs> Okay, one other little thing here, um, kids clubs. Okay, most all the cruise lines have kids clubs. You're going to find the best kids clubs on Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Disney, of course. Uh, Princess is pretty good, too. And I, those are the five that I will say have the best kids clubs. Like I said, most of the other cruise lines are a little more luxury, and they tend to cater to a little bit more of an older yeah. crowd. They 
They and may some have, of those people, have, some of the people want nothing to do with kids. They, they may hate have you for kids bringing your kids on the show. They probably don't do as exciting of things for your kids as these other ones do. Yeah. So I would stick with the others, and they're all have different age levels. Uh, usually, there's different groups like. Well, for instance, Carnival is 2 to 5 as a group, 6 to 8, 9 to 11, and then you go on up to 12 to 14 and 15 to 17. Mm -hmm. The other cruise lines are all, I think, similar, but some cruise lines, I think it's Royal or Norwegian now, they don't start till age 3. But So you just check with your cruise lines to see what category your child will fall yeah. into. And, and the awesome thing is, I mean, these services are free. They now, are. Th there are some late night things mm -hmm. and a few... Uh, special things they do that might cost a little money yes. if you want to be involved in it but you can literally get up go to breakfast with your kid let them go to the camp for a few hours while you're laying out get them for lunch let them go back to camp for a few hours get them for dinner let them go back after <laughs> dinner if they're having a good time yeah. i mean and it's so free. so you're not locked into having to hold your your kid's yeah. hand on a cruise ship every time but um you know they you can definitely close, take advantage of so it at a certain time usually around 10 on most cruise lines they close down and if they either have a party after that for the kids, which you can pay for, or they can they have a babysitting service after that, which you pay for as well. After yeah, that. late night and stuff but, like that. Um, and other than that, most cruise lines, they may have a couple other little activities they do, like Carnival has Build-A-Bear, and some of the other cruise lines have a couple things that are an additional cost, but for the most part, but that's something you have to go to with them as a parent. You can't just drop them off there for that. Yes, um, and, but, and one of my biggest tip with the kids stuff, because this happened with our kid when he was little and first went in, is, um, you know, listen, if you <laughs> if you drop off your kid in the kids club, yeah, and you pick like them up later, and, young, it's and you pick them up and they're upset and crying, give it another chance to bring them back, because my theory is that the first time you drop them off, they're not sure if you're ever coming back again. Yeah. Once, they learn, that, school, yeah, once they learn that you're going to be there to get them in a while, then you drop them off another time. And they may be cool as a cucumber and uh, so having a good time. To do it by the end of the cruise, yeah, they're going to... Yeah, by the end of the cruise, they'll be like, no, I don't want to leave. Yeah. I just want to stay here with all these Our other kids. Our son was like that, and by his second cruise, all he wanted to do was go to um, Camp Carnival, yes. or Camp Ocean now. And now he's 12, and he's still just... All he wants to do when he gets on the ship is go to the kids' clubs. That's that's yeah. that's his favorite thing to do. Yeah. So, you know, and all kids are different, of course. But just give it a second or third try, you know, because... You'll be surprised that they might love it after after a while. Oh, and one side note, one challenge is that um, uh, you can let your child stay in the kids' club while the ship is in port. You can. And adults can go out and do some, you know, whatever, scuba diving without the kid. Yeah. You get online, there's lots of people that lean one way or the other. Uh, we are on the side of the fence where we won't leave our son on the ship if we're off the ship because... We don't want to ever have to worry about any separation there or Somehow, any issue but, going on, God forbid. But, but other people are, do it. It's no big deal yeah, and, and whatever and works for you. And it's not that they're not going to be safe. They're completely safe on the ship, you know, so either way, whatever you want to do, yeah, it's fine. whatever you're comfortable with. So, um, port shopping. Real quick, all I'm going to say is when you get off in the port, uh, most of the ports, people will kind of hound you for things, following you around. They will try to put stuff in your hands sometimes. Just don't want to do your own shopping. Um, make sure that you do a little shopping before you just buy everything because sometimes you'll find it at another store a couple doors down cheaper than what it was at one store. So just kind of look around a little and feel things out before you buy too much because you might save a lot of money. So that's all I'm going to say with that. And the same with the photos. All the ships will be taking your photo every time you turn around. You can either just let them take them or tell them no thank you. But Wait till maybe the next to last day. Don't wait till the last day because it's kind of a hassle usually. But next to last day. And then go look through all your photos. And then maybe pick the best couple you like. Because sometimes you, you start each day you look at them and you're like, oh, I want that photo. And then you just you end up at the end of the cruise and you have all these photos. Nowhere to put. <laughs> yeah. So so just wait. and maybe down that road. You'll save a lot of money and you'll get your best couple photos there. Yes. And as a husband, <laughs> I spend a lot of time just standing there while my wife browses through every photo. Yeah. And asked me five different times how she looks in this picture or that picture. <laughs> and um, I just, I've learned to just say, whichever one you want, honey, fine with me. I'm sure you make a good decision. Anyway. All right, what else we got? Uh, okay, the spa. Real quickly, all I'm going to say about the spa is some people love the spa. Some people don't really go and use the spa. But if you want to use it, um, look, wait and look for on port days to use it. Maybe get back on the ship a little early or do something before you get off the ship. 
but check the prices because Port Days will have the best prices and they usually have some like promotion promotions and things because it is a Port Day and yes. that's when they know they're not going to get that much business. Yeah. So just check for Port Days on. I think we learned a long time ago. The spa services are great, <laughs> and if you got the money to burn, enjoy them. Um, but I think the first time Sharon went to the spa, she came back with about $150 <laughs> worth of <laughs> lotions and creams and God knows yeah. what. And I'm like, what the heck? What is this junk? And they she, will try to yeah, sell you They stuff. will sell you stuff. They're there to make money. Don't be yeah, confused about that. <laughs> um, Anyways, a lot of ships ha still have art auctions. Um, if you're into art, they're kind of fun. Sometimes they'll have yeah, a little free We got some nice paintings we, uh, we in won, our early cruises yeah, from that kind of stuff. we've won some free art. We've bought some art in the past. We don't really go anymore because we don't have anywhere to put any more yeah. art in our and house. And we may have some art rolled up in a tube in the closet that's been there for <laughs> 10 we years that um, that we're yeah. you know still haven't really done anything with. So. Yeah, so, but anyways, it, it, you know what? And also, they usually give you free champagne, so it's, sometimes it's just fun to go just to sit there and drink the free champagne sure. and check it out. Nothing so, wrong with that. Yeah, anyway. A little free champagne. So, from our auctions, let's just talk a little bit about laundry. Sometimes people need to do laundry on the ship. Some people don't. From art do auctions, any, let's talk about know, laundry. Any, That's a segue if I ever heard one. Any, some people don't want to do any laundry. I don't want to even see laundry when I'm on a cruise ship because I'm on vacation. But some yeah. people will pack less and do some laundry on board. Uh, they do have some little laundry rooms where you can do it yourself on most cruise lines and most ships. Not all, but most. You can check. If they do, maybe bring some little Tide um, pods or d laundry detergent and some dryer sheets with you. It'll save you a lot of money on the ship. You can probably ship. buy it on the ship, but it probably costs you an can, arm and a leg. but it, right? it'll cost you a lot. And also, to yeah. use the washers and dryers, I think you just kind of swipe your card, your, your sail sign, or something yeah. to use them nowadays. What about, can, do these coin, too? Uh, no, they oh. used to use coin, but I think most of them have gone to the card. Now, also, the sh cruise ships will do your laundry as well. You can pay but for it. But you're going to pay. You're going to pay the price unless you're like platinum, diamond, or some elite um, status. You're going to pay the price so um it's completely up to you yes but that's um anyways another thing about kind of about laundry beach towels do not bother to buy new beach towels waste the space packing beach towels because all the cruise lines will provide you with fresh clean beach towels every day and if you need more than one they'll yes. give you more than one but just make sure that you return them at the end of the day because otherwise you'll have a charge for them on your yeah, car. keep an eye on your beach towels. Not cheap beach towels. <laughs> and your room steward will, will bring you fresh ones every day. Right. Or um, if maybe you're watching a movie under the stars or something, you're out on the Lido deck and there's usually a stand there where you can fuzzy check them out too. Fuzzy type towels for mm -hmm. that and stuff. And so that's yes. nice. Yeah. So don't pack them. They're easy to get your hands on on yeah, the ship. That's right. And one little last tip, bring a, um, if you like to drink a lot of just water and things, bring a little travel cup with, that has the lid on it. Um, because you can fill it up with water on like the Lido deck buffet or something that the waters are filtered on the ships mm -hmm. and it just saves you a lot of money um, from some of the water drinking around the ship and you can walk around and have your water and you don't have to worry about constantly drinking your bottled water that you might want to use that when you get off in port you take mm. with you in port. Yeah. So that's just another And the little cups they have are like tip. this big so if you don't want to yeah. go back and refill every five seconds. Right and they don't have lids bring or something anything, like that. So that's just a little money saving tip there. So. Last but not least, I'm just going to give you two big tips here. <laughs> Make sure. Hold on a second. Did you talk about the casino? We did talk about the casino. Bring cash. <laughs> okay, bring cash. But if you like to gamble, they have the casino. They have a full selection of slots. They have all the table games. It's all like Vegas style. Mm -hmm. It's legit. The good dealers. Um, it's a great place to learn. I learned how to play craps on a cruise ship, and um, I love it now. Um, but while you're in port, the, the casino is closed. It yeah. only opens as you leave port. Right. And um, it's kind of 24 hour, but not really. It will be closed for a little bit and the machines will turn off overnight sometimes. Late, late at night, like four or five in the morning and then reopen at like seven, eight in the morning, that type of deal. So, and one other thing, all the shops and things on the Ooh. ship are closed when you're in port. Pretty much everything closes down when you're in port. Yes. So, so don't think you need to quickly go buy <clears throat> some sunscreen or just something at the shop on your way out to the port that day because the shops will be closed yeah get it the night before if you right. need it so good call anyways so that's about all we have for you except for i'm going to not stress enough to bring plenty of sunscreen especially if you're traveling to the caribbean or somewhere sunny and warm because mm -hmm. you will fry especially if you're fair skinned even if you're not fair skinned yeah i get like burnt if i don't put like 50 on so well, you it's totally burnt. different this guy <laughs> had a burnt foot 
uh, yeah. incident on our first cruise, Third and <laughs> um, it was brutal. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised that we've gone back yeah. for more after so make what sure happened that first trip. Lather up everywhere, even your feet, because you'll be surprised how many people get like really just like sunburned yeah. feet. Yeah. You will laugh at the people who'll be wearing like a formal dress at dinner, and you can see Our the bathing suit lines. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, their lops are burnt. Yeah. Oh, it's hideous. So, and the one last thing I will not stress enough is make sure you put your phones in airplane mode before sail yeah. away. That's worth a second. That's like revisiting. Make sure you revisit put that topic. your phones in. Airplane mode before a sail away. Yeah, it's, <laughs> good call. Anyways, so that's all we have for you for now. Please leave any questions you may have about cruising in the comments below. And we're going to come back in a couple weeks here and kind of do a follow-up, like a part two type thing, mm -hmm. and answer any questions you may have. If we don't know the answers, we'll go to the source and get the correct answer for you. And we just want everyone to feel safe. Cruising. Cruising is a great family vacation. It's just, um, I can't say enough about it. Yes, love it's been awesome for us, and that's why we like talking about it and doing these videos. And that's why Sharon started her own business with being able to help people get booked on them because it's just exciting to, yeah, to we, talk about just, and revisit it and, yeah. and all that fun stuff. So, uh, um, so check out Sharon at C.com. Check out Sharon at C on YouTube. Um, if you're traveling, there's also a great Facebook page, Facebook page called Cruise and Carnival with Kids. Sharon actually runs that, and its whole, whole focus is... Um, yeah, if you have uh, kid-related you know, questions, you might want to Kids stuff and join. families that are cruising with kids. Mm -hmm. It's got a couple thousand members, so that's rolling real strong. Um, I think we're up to like 43 or 4,400 yeah, 4, members. 4,400 members, so, uh, so that's an awesome thing you can look for, too. And, um, you know, so check out Sharon at Sea. Yep, and I am going to be posting on my blog, SharonAtSea.com, a little more in-depth um, sort of, re re I guess, informational thing you can read about um, with cru first-time cruisers. So it'll have a little more in-depth information oh, yeah. on it. Uh, but anyways, like I said, post your questions yes. below so we can get them all answered for yeah. you for next time. And we'll time. be doing more stuff like this because our next cruise is until October, I so know. we got to keep busy. That's so we right. just want to keep talking about we'll it. We'll be on the carnival breeze in October, I can't yeah. wait. And it's hot here in Arizona. And, and we actually, get out of here. next week we might bring you a few pics from Disneyland because I will be taking a, it'll be a yeah. Sharon at Sea on land. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Um, little video, so that's that'll right. be coming at the end of next week. So Minus me, we'll I don't get to go. July. Can you believe that? I'm being left behind. So it's a mother son trip. What's a <laughs> what's a guy to do when the wife and kid are out of town for a few days? Well, yeah, some people mm. have to work. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll uh, we'll catch you later. Okay. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See you.